Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Temtem video. We're now only six days away from the early access launch and I hope everyone's excited as I am. Today we're gonna to be doing a brief overview of how the breeding system in Temtem works. So we'll be looking at how to breed, who can breed, how long it takes to breed, what breeding entails, breeding's limitations, and my thoughts on the whole system. So with that being said, let's get into it. So I'm taking my information straight from the Temtem wiki which I will be leaving a link to in the description below if anyone wants to check it out. The wiki has breeding broken up into four categories, compatibility, fertility, acquiring eggs, and inheritance. Before we get into any of that, however, first let's go over the general breeding overview description. It reads, Breeding is a method of creating new Temtem eggs by putting two compatible Temtem together. Through breeding, newborn Temtem can inherit different aspects of, from their parents, such as techniques, traits, and single values, allowing the players to create unique Temtem that cannot otherwise be found naturally in the wild. So this is all straightforward information. If anyone has experience breeding in Pokemon, you'd know that much of this is the same. Parents pass down stats, natures, etc. Temtem seems to be no different in that aspect. There are, however, very key differences in Temtem breeding that do set it apart from Pokemon. So this all starts with our first point, compatibility. If two Temtem share a type, the pair is compatible for breeding. If they do not share a type, they cannot breed. For Temtem with two types, the other Temtem only needs to be one of their types to be compatible. For example, a Temtem that is both water and electric can breed with another Temtem that is either water or electric with at least one of its types. This differs immensely from Pokemon and is honestly a welcome addition. Instead of having to go on Cerebi to look up the egg groups, Temtem has it very simple. Your type equals compatibility. Got the Temtem Crystal? Well, guess what? It breeds with two vine. Got Pigapic? Guess what? It also breeds with two vine. It's very simple and I do appreciate it. Fertility is where a lot of people might either get lost or find the Pokemon system to be superior. I personally understand why fertility is a thing, but I'd rather do without it. But before I get into that, let's uh, read the description provided. Temtem have a fertility value that lowers each time a new egg is produced. This is so a Temtem can only breed a specific amount of times. There is no way to gain fertility. It is currently maxed at 8 levels. While producing an offspring, both parents will lose one level of fertility. The resulting is a child with a lower fertility value between the two parents after the egg is produced. For example, if one parent had 20 fertility and the other had 14, after producing the egg their fertility will lower to 19 and 13 respectively, and the child will be born with 13 fertility as well. In the case of wild Temtem, their fertility is normally 8, however the value is the default but is also lowered by having a good SV, meaning that any SV higher than 45. At 1 or 2 good stats, the fertility drops to 7, 3 or 4 good stats lower it to 6, 5 or 6 good stats lower it to 5, and having all 7 lowers it to a minimum of 4. To grossly simplify, your Thames can't breed forever. Every time they breed, they get closer to losing the ability to breed forever. So if you have a high SV Tem that you're trying to breed to get an even higher SV Tem, you might be SOL if it uses up all of its fertility slots before the better Temtem is born. This could cause you to have to step back and try breeding again from scratch. So like I said, I personally could do without it. I guess it's technically more realistic, but it just seems like it's designed in a way that could cause pointless frustration. Imagine you're breeding two Pokemon, for example, with four perfect IVs just to get that fifth one, and then suddenly they can't breed anymore. You're going to be stuck going backwards until you can find the next best parent to breed and hope that they have enough fertility to get back to where you were before. Again, I'm not a huge fan of this mechanic, but there is possibly information that I'm missing. I'm just getting from what the wiki is telling me. So this is probably the most straightforward of the bunch. However, this might cause controversy. So I'm curious to see your opinions on it in the comments below. Our description reads, to breed a Temtem, the player must go to a breeding center and deposit their desired pair to begin the process. The breeding center can hold up to two different couples at the same time. It will usually take 25 minutes in real time for the pair to produce an egg, or 15 minutes if both parents are of the same evolutionary line. The egg will contain a level 1 Temtem of the first form of the mother's evolutionary line. The breeding center can only store one egg per Temtem pair, so the player has to get the egg before the pair can start breeding process again. Hatching an egg requires 5 to 45 minutes to hatch depending on the child Temtem's capture rate. Eggs deposited into the terminal do not have a timer and therefore will not hatch until removed. Essentially, instead of steps, the Temtem are locked behind real time. Depending on the Tem, it could take up to 25 minutes for an egg and 45 minutes for a hatch. 
On one side, it's nice that you don't have to run around in circles on top of your Tauros, and you can kind of do stuff while you're waiting, but on the other side, if you were to run around in circles, it'd probably be much faster. Also, this might just be the cynic in me, but I could see a company taking advantage of this and paywalling the timer. For example, Elder Scrolls Blades, uh, which allows someone to bypass a timer by paying a fee. I heard this is gone now, but I'm not 100% sure. This might seem like nothing more than a convenience-based microtransaction on the surface, but it's my opinion that convenience-based microtransactions, despite not appearing so on the surface, are indirectly linked to pay to win. Think about a game like Pokemon Go. If you only have one incubator, it's going to take you nine times longer to hatch eggs than someone who is paying out. You'll only be able to do seven raids a week, plus whatever you get from having your Pokemon in gyms, which is about 350 coins a week, aka three and a half raid passes, and that's only if you don't use your your coins on incubators. Someone can pay and then raid all they want and consistently get the best Pokemon and you'll never be able to catch up to them. Same goes with this. If someone can just insta hatch eggs uh, via some sort of paywall, they can get a perfect team very quickly and then spend their time sharpening their battle skills while someone like me would be running or not. Well, I guess not running, waiting for uh, the hatches to happen. I do have faith that Kramer will not take advantage of this, but generally speaking, real time counters just leave a bad taste in my mouth due to the kind of scummy monetization strategies that I've seen. From what we know, Crema has promised that in the future it will only be cosmetic and I want to trust them because because despite companies like Bethesda and Activision blatantly lying about their monetization systems, Crema hasn't given us a reason to doubt them, and I'm, I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt, considering the fact that you can feel the love they put into Temtem just by playing it for a couple hours. <laughs> This is where it gets a little more confusing, but if you're someone who breeds in Pokemon, this isn't anything to worry about. The offspring of breeding will inherit from its parents in multiple aspects. Number one, fertility. Children will inherit the lower value between the parents' fertility counter after the egg is produced. For example, if the parents had 14 and 20 fertility and produced an egg, their fertility is lower to 13 and 19 respectively. So the child will inherit the fertility value of 13 as a result. Two, techniques. Every Temtem has a set of techniques it may learn from its parents the moment it hatches. This allows newborns to know moves that they would not normally learn leveling up. Three, single value. Every one of the child's stats has a 40% chance of being the higher SV between the two parents, a 40% chance of being the average of both parents' SVs, and a 20% chance of being the lower of the two's SVs. Number four, traits. By default, traits are not inherited, instead will be selected randomly upon hatching. Although, like SVs, certain gear items can ensure inherited traits from one of the parents. Number five, Luma Temtem. Bred Temtem normally have the same chance of being Luma as Wild Temtem do. This chance increases by 10 times if one of the parents is Luma, and further increases by 100 times if both parents are Luma. Luma Temtem produced this way will follow the same rules of inheritance for single values as regular Temtem. Okay, so I'm going to summarize the points in layman's terms. So for the first point, Tems will grab the lower fertility value of the parents. Simple enough. So for number two, techniques passing down, just think about egg moves. For number three, single values, the Tems have a 40% chance of inheriting the stronger of the two parents, a 40% chance of having an average between the two parents, and a 20% chance of having the lower of the two parents. So think of it like this. Let's say, okay, so mom has 50 attack and dad has 40 attack. There's a 40% chance baby will have 50 attack, the higher stat, a 40% chance of having 45, the average of the two, and a 20% chance of having 40, the lower stat. In other words, the Thames are going to inherit all stats from the parents, whether it be average or a specific one of the two. For the fourth point, traits or abilities, they're not going to be inherited at all, but apparently there are certain items that can ensure this. And also apparently, judging from this, there's also an item that works for SVs. And for the fifth one, Luma forms increase by tenfold if one parent is Luma and a hundredfold if both are. For those of you who don't know, Luma is the Temtem equivalent of Shiny. <laughs> Okay, so this was just a basic overview of the breeding systems, not meant to be a one-for-one -one guide. There are clearly items that I'm not aware of that can help with breeding, but this video is more so to educate you on the basics so that together as a community we can find the best breeding methods as we uh, explore the early access launch. I'm personally very happy with the Luma inheritance as well as the fact that it seems that egg moves may come from both parents instead of just a father like in Pokemon. So let me know what you guys think about Temtem breeding. Do you prefer Pokemon system? Uh, did I miss any important details? Please let me know in the comments below and make sure to like, subscribe, and until next time, peace.